Hi, I'm freezing, so I'm in a huge blanket. Welcome to the Mossy River. I'm Jessie. Today I'm doing a tag that I made. This is gonna be hashtag one deck for each house. So um, I really wanted to learn the energy of the houses better, the astrological houses, so I decided to find a deck that I thought, you know, kind of embodied that. So it was a lot of fun and I wanted to make it a tag in case anybody else wanted to join. I think it would be a lot of fun to see other people's, you know, thoughts and perspectives and deck, deck choices. So if you want to join, please do use the hashtag one deck for each house. Um, I'm not a professional astrologer. I'm still learning. So, you know, my choices make sense to me, but I'm not, I'm not sure if that makes sense to somebody who knows this stuff really well. So I'd love to see some, some other, uh, perspectives. Um, also I did check to see if this had been done before and I couldn't find anything, but if you know something I don't, please let me know and I will give credit where credit is due. But other than that, let's go look at some decks. Okay. So let's start with the first house. Um, I am going to read just a little part. Also, excuse my nails. They're stained and they got glue on them, but whatever. Um, a little part from this uh, Star Codes Astro Oracle Guidebook by Heather Roan Robbins. Just to kind of give a little bit of context on the houses. Um, I also have my cards over here, you know, to keep track. Okay, so first house. Um, let's get into this guidebook real quick. Okay, so, um, the first house, Arrival. If your chart were a village map, the first house would be the gateway and in information center. The first house, this card also says the first house, um, deals with impression, self, personality, ego, identity, uh, appearance, beginnings, attitude, and your approach to life. So what I picked for the first house, and this made so much sense to me, I don't know if this is going to make sense to anybody else, but I chose the Reclaim Oracle by uh, Marianne Constantin. Okay, so let's see if I can, you know, do this justice for why I chose this. <sighs> okay, so if the first house deals with your identity and how you approach life and how you arrive in different situations, how you present yourself when you arrive in a new scenario or a new place or a new practice the way you look at the world in a new situation. Um, that to me feels like emotion and feelings. Whether we are aware of our emotions and feelings in that moment or not, how we feel, in my opinion, is always the driving force behind how we see things or how we present ourselves. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> so this feels like, this deck feels like self. It feels like all the feelings and emotions that each of us go through personally in our inner world, our innermost selves. And I feel like that at times, like, if you're arriving in a new situation, if you're feeling passion about, passionate about it, you're going to look at it as, you know, exciting and you're going to be motivated. But on the other hand, like, if 
here we go. Like this, for example, if you arrive in a new situation and you're feeling guilty, maybe you're feeling guilty about leaving your old situation, even though you're pas passionate about this new situation that you're arriving in, maybe you're holding on to guilt from an old situation for leaving that. And that makes entering this new phase harder and it's hard for you to get in touch with that passion and it's harder for you to be motivated because you're holding on to guilt. Does that make sense? So it's like whatever emotion, whatever feeling we're having, whether we're conscious of it or not, is going to affect how we appear to ourselves, how we appear to other people, how we see ourselves, how we begin new adventures, how we see the world, how we approach things. In my opinion, emotions, our innermost world, is always affecting that in some way. So that's why I chose this deck. Um, I hope I explained that right because like in my head it makes so much sense, but I don't know if <laughs> I found the right words to kind of explain to you guys what I meant. So hopefully that made sense. So that was the Reclaim Oracle for the first house. Okay, so the second house rules like our physical material experience, like work, money, um, property, our five senses, things like that. Um, okay, so this book says, if your chart were a village map, the second house would hold your bank, museum, and warehouses. It symbolizes what you value, like your body, your relationship to the material world. So for that, I chose the Antique Anatomy. So, okay, part of the reason I chose this one is because it does feel very earthy to me, right? It's got bones. Um, it's got physical, like, like these rods here. Like, I feel like I could hold one, you know. Um, it's got flora body parts so it feels like a physical experience to me um and also i feel like this deck is really good for asking questions about resources because resources whether it's money food time energy like all of those things are part of how we deal with this physical experience here on earth um and so i think this deck is really good for that because it has you know the physicality feeling of it but it's also a pip deck right so it's open enough to kind of fit anyone's experience or anyone's amount of resources, whether they have, you know, plentiful resources or whether they have a lack of resources. Because it's a pip deck, it's like open enough to, to personal interpretation, I guess I would say. Um... Like I said, I'm just getting to know the houses better, so I apologize if I don't, you know, really do it justice with the words I'm choosing to describe why I chose these decks for each house, but this was just kind of my own process in trying to learn the houses better, and I feel like it actually really did um, help me, whether or not I'm describing it right. <laughs> um... And also, that, like, when it comes to the five senses, I feel like this is a good one, too, because it has, you know, the, the physical part, you know, like, our bones, 
But then like with the flowers and stuff, it's almost like you can imagine smelling these flowers and um, like with this hand here, what it would feel like to brush your fingers up against these old bones and like the sound of, of a spine cracking or like, you know, stuff. So that, that's kind of where this deck took me also. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense. <laughs> I'm probably going to say that for every single one. But that was the antique anatomy for the second house. Okay, so third house. So the third house rules communication, thinking, community, travel, early education, um, like your social life and your surrounding uh, neighborhood. Um, so Star Codes says... If your chart were a village map, the third house would represent your local neighborhood, primary school, and corner pub. It symbolizes how you learn, communicate, and move around your familiar world based on your sibling-like relationships and the people in your local environment. So for this one, I picked the Urban Tarot. And I actually had a hard time I had a really hard time with this one and um the fourth house I think um I went like going back and forth on which one I wanted for which house because I feel like this is so subjective right so okay let me just get into it before I start explaining why I feel that way <laughs> Sorry about that. My husband um, had to ask me a question. So what was I saying? <laughs> the Urban Tarot. Um, yeah, okay. So I feel like this is so subjective because the way you communicate and the way you think is influenced by your community, right? Your surrounding environment, your close neighborhood. But that's subjective because everyone experiences that differently. Everywhere, everyone, you know, lives somewhere different. Some people live, you know, in an urban place. Some people live in a rural place. Some people live in a, you know, a thick city. Like, you know, it's, it's different, but I chose this because this is what it, it felt like to me. Like, I recognize a lot of, you know, these, and I, and I do feel like most people probably would recognize a lot of these, like, scenes and places. Um, you know, maybe not specifically, but like, you know, for this, for example, like, a teacher, right, at a school looking out the window at the at the playground a police officer you know art on on the street as you're you know walking down the sidewalk a restaurant in your local neighborhood maybe this is a local bar that plays live music you know like i feel like this feels like a neighborhood this feels like a close neighborhood and it feels like These are the kinds of things and places that are recognizable that that you experience in your early life, right? Like, and these are the, the, the people and places and things that kind of influence the way you communicate with the surrounding world and think to yourself and communicate with other people and um, socialize and while that you know might change as you get older and experience more things and venture farther out into the world like I feel like this is the kind of place that would be like the foundation of you know how you learn to communicate with the world and with other people and with yourself. So, 
that is my choice for the third house. Oops. The Urban Tarot. Okay, so fourth house. So the fourth house rules the home, um, like your sense of security, privacy, um, like parents, childhood. And Star Code says, if your chart were a village map, the fourth house would be your home base. Our early home life impacts our sense of sanctuary and how we bring things to conclusion. So for this one, I chose the Gift of Life Tarot. So this is the other one that I went back and forth on if I wanted to choose this for the fourth house or the third house. Because these things are so subjective, right? Depending on where you grew up and what your surrounding, you know, environment looks like. Um, but I ultimately went with this one for the fourth house because the people in this deck, they feel like a family, right? They feel like, even though these, these photos are from, from all over the world, that's just another layer in saying like, depending on where your home is. Right, that is going to be your sense of security, and that's different for everybody. Um, and also, it feels like, yeah, wh what you know, where you're from, what you grew up, um, you know experiencing in your home life and with your parents with your siblings as a child that impacts your sense of security right um and i just oh, i just really love the people in this deck um they feel so like it does it feels like a nurturing parent it feels like You know, after you've, and even though like this isn't my particular sense of home because I'm not from, you know, any of the places that are shown here, I can feel that, I can feel the sense of home in the faces of, of the people in these cards. And it just feels like after you've like gone out on a, adventure and you're tired and whatever like this is this is where you return home right to your family to your home base to your security to what you know and you feel loved and nurtured and safe another thing i forgot to mention is i did try my hardest to choose decks that would fit like a general sense of these houses, right? Like I could have chosen a deck that felt more like my particular sense of home, my actual home, right? But I wanted to choose one that I thought kind of encaptured the bigger picture of that when it comes to like humanity as a whole, right? Not just my, not just me. So I hope my choices reflect that, but. Yeah, this one just feels like a loving family. It feels like it feels like a mom. It does. <laughs> um, I think it really brings that like Cancerian energy into this as well. That um, cancer rules the fourth house so anyways that was my choice for the fourth house the gift of life tarot okay so fifth house so the fifth house rules passion um it also rules like romance love 
um, creativity, your your interests and hobbies, um, joy, pleasure. Um, so the star code says, if your chart was a village map, the fifth house might be the outdoor cafe on the square ro where romance hovers, teenagers meet, and children run around the edges. Music wafts, a poet speaks. Here people take risks. The fifth house speaks of our capacity to love in the form of affairs, romance, self-expression, creative processes, investments, and performance. All right, so I don't know if this is a strange choice or not, but I chose the erotic tarot. So I know this deck, there's going to be nudity, just so you know. We're all adults here, or we should be, right? So just a warning. Um... I know this deck is, you know, it's called the erotic tarot, so it's meant for, like, you know, sexy time. But the way this deck feels to me is more than that. This deck just feels like passion. It feels like creative life force. It feels like more than just sex. And I think that sexual energy is a part of passionate energy when it comes to creativity when it comes to obviously when it comes to sex when it comes to but sex isn't necessarily fifth house um but I think that it can be you know romance love creation the things that you are like the things that grab your attention and spark a, a flame in you the things you want to move towards and learn about and act upon, the things you love, the things that bring you pleasure. Like this is just what this is what this deck feels like to me. And I often use this deck for readings about passion and creativity that aren't necessarily about sex. Um, so yeah, this, this deck just made a lot of sense to me because I feel like a lot of the time sex is talked about as taboo, but when you really think about what that feels like, what sexual energy feels like, it feels very similar to passion. It feels very similar to pleasure and creativity and you know, all the things that the fifth house deals with. Um, taking risks, right? Taking risks on a passion. Yeah, like, I hope this makes sense because it really, it really makes so much sense to me. <laughs> And I, I also, if I'm not making sense, I'm sorry, but like, I'm very much a kind of person that I go by energy and I go by feeling, right? And so sometimes putting that into descriptive words can be hard, um, but yeah. So that was my choice for the fifth house of passion. It's almost like if you if you separate, well, no, because I don't want to separate the, the sex aspect because that's part of passion. Like, I think it's okay to incorporate that energy in other parts of our lives and not make it weird, you know? Like, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a feeling. Anyways, that was my choice for the fifth house, the erotic tarot. All right, sixth house, halfway through. So the sixth house rules sustainability. Um, it's about our health, our well-being, like exercise and diet, um, how we help and provide service to others, our routines. Um, it can also be about pets. Uh, so this book says, if your chart were a village map, the sixth house would represent the central kitchen gym, health clinic, and dog park. 
The sixth house speaks to where you live out your daily habits, your work environment, your pets, your mind-body connection, and how you tend to your health. Okay, so for this one, I chose the Herb Crafters Tarot. So, again, this deck is a feeling <laughs> to me because of all the herbs in this deck. It feels like, it feels like sustainability, right? It, it feels like not only using the resources around you, um, and not at, you know, in, in, um, using what the earth is providing us in a sustainable way instead of adding to consumerism and capitalism and, um, and not only being sustainable by using what the earth provides us, but also like, it feels like, okay, these are the, these are the herbs and the, these are the practices that I use. These are the routines that I'm in. These are the, the, this is the tea that I drink every day, right? Um, this is the turmeric <laughs> that I take twice a day because it helps with the arthritis in my knees. <laughs> you know, like, um, it also feels like this is where I would go walk my dog, you know, on a trail in the woods um it also feels like i'm using a lot of like feels like because like i said that's what i go by how it feels um it feels like this is um a healthy diet this is what gives me nourishment and and helps my overall health and well-being physically mentally emotionally and maybe that's a personal thing but i also do feel like the earth can do that for all of us oh look there's two mark um it also feels like a way to help other people right like somebody who um Like an Adelita, right? Like, like they're preparing this, you know, vaginal steam bath to help somebody, right? Like this is how you can serve others as well. Not everybody, but I mean, it's it's an example of that, right? And this deck just really felt like it encompassed the whole of the sixth house to me. Yeah, like the routine of going out into your garden every day and checking in on your plant babies and taking care of them and harvesting them to take care of yourself and to take care of other people and, you know, not wasting anything. Um, yeah. So that one really fit the bill for me. So that is my choice for the sixth house. The Herb Crafters Tarot. Okay, so it's a different day um, when I'm filming the second half of this, so I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit different, but um, okay, let's move on to the seventh house. So the seventh house deals with relationships. Um, relationships with other people, a romantic partner, friends, business partners, enemies, um, you know, equality and sharing. So the star code says... If your chart were a village map, the seventh house is anywhere two equals relate with intensity and intimacy. Somewhere you'd have dinner on the balcony and watch the sunset. It is concerned with how other equals come into your life and how you interact with them. and includes marriage and open warfare, business partners, legal issues, key consultants, and advisors. So for this one... I chose the transparent tarot. I'm gonna put this um, like white cloth that comes with down so you can see better. All right, hopefully 
that's good enough. So, okay. I chose this one because I feel like it shows a really cool way of looking at the seventh house when it comes to relationships. So I'm just going to start with just two cards to start out with. But so we have one card here, right? So let's say this is one person. Okay. And the other card is another person. So they're both their own thing. They both have their own strengths. They both have their own weaknesses. They both have their own experiences, personalities, whatever, right? They're both individuals. And having a relationship and, you know, especially in the seventh house means these two coming together, right? That's, that's what the relationship is about, right? Two different people or things coming together to make a third thing. It's kind of like the threes in tarot, right? So here we can see the seven of swords. You know, there's a figure holding the swords, a three swords trailing behind. Over here we have the chariot with the two horses looking each way. They're both separate, but when they come together, they make a whole different image. They make a whole new story. And they both bring together all of their strengths, all of their weaknesses, all their specific set of experiences and ways of communicating, ways of thinking. And you come together to make a whole new thing. Um, and you can either, f you know, fight against each other in creating this new thing, or you can nurture this relationship and um, you know, maybe compromise or communicate in such a way where you can work together for the benefit of both parties involved. So let me get another set of cards. Three of Pentacles and the Nine of Pentacles. This kind of like reminds me of where maybe the seventh house can even point out where our relationships are have an imbalance, right? Like where are maybe we thinking that we are better than someone else that we have a relationship in one way or another, right? Maybe there's an aspect of this, of this, um, partnership that we have with someone where we think we know more than them or we have more than them and the seventh house can kind of help us point out where we might be like wrongly you know maybe acting superior in some way or maybe not giving ourselves enough credit in the relationship. Maybe we are seeing ourselves then lesser than this other person and that we have this contract with or this agreement with or whatever it is, you know. Four of Cups. Four of Cups, Four of Pentacles. So that's cool. Four and Four. And then another cool thing about this deck is, you know, not only using the two cards, but you can layer however many cards you want into this. So it's like here we have the Four of Cups and the Four of Pentacles. And when they come together, what do they make? The Eight of Swords. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> we got an eight. Four and four makes eight. Interesting. So maybe also the seventh house can point out, like, even when we think we are equal, right? We're both fours and <laughs> coming together, we make this eight. And maybe we thought that this was, this was good and this was, this was right. And this was um, what we wanted or what we needed. But we find that maybe this relationship is actually keep, keeping us stuck in some way or the relationship itself is stuck in some way. We're holding ourselves back. 
yeah so I think that this deck really whoops yeah I feel like this really oh that's cool page of swords page of pentacles how they just layer right on top of each other how our relationships sometimes we become we become the other person in the relationship maybe we take on too much of the other person maybe they take on too much of us or maybe it shows us where we could learn where we could try and embody something that we admire about them where we could learn from them yeah so I thought this deck was a really oh, this is really cool I'm feeling like I really want to keep playing with this deck <laughs> I haven't used it in a while but yeah, I feel like this um, this one was really cool, I think, for the 7th house, for me anyways. It made a lot of sense on how two things come together to make a third thing. You know, for good, for bad, for more, for less, for whatever. Like, it is what it is, and it's, you know, up to us to kind of interpret in our own chart what is in our seventh house and how that applies to our relationships so that was my choice for the seventh house the transparent tarot okay eighth house um this one was really fun for me to kind of dive into because i'm in an eighth house perfection year right now so um i'm like really into this stuff <laughs> at the moment so Eighth house deals with mystery. It deals with the things that are sometimes seen as kind of taboo or kind of uncomfortable to talk about. Things like um, life, death, birth, transformation, um, sex, money, stuff like that. Um, okay, so the Star Codes book says... If your chart were a village map, the eighth house would be on the corner of the red light district next to the mortuary. Next to the mortuary. Mort why am I having <laughs> Mortuary. Mortuary. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with that word. Next to the mortuary. Am I saying that right? <laughs> and a savings and loan bank. It is a private house where we deal with things we don't talk about in public. Sex. Death debts, loans, psychic phenomenon. Uh, here we deal with other people's resources, how they're exchanged, money, bodies, thoughts, work, how we inherit goods and attitudes. This house can feel uncomfortable, but it's where we can transform. Um, okay, so for this one, oops, forgot to grab it. For this one, I chose the Abyssal Tarot. Um, these are photographs by Shelley Corbett. The book is written by, I don't know if that's Stefan or Stephen, um, album? Album? <clears throat> so, Sorry about that, I forgot to get it out uh, before I started recording. <laughs> so this deck feels very 8th house to me. It feels very like... I think it definitely could be uncomfortable in, in some circumstances or to some people. It feels very mysterious. It's very... All these photographs were taken underwater, so it's naturally very watery. Um, this deck feels like water and fire to me. Um, the combination of water and fire, which in my opinion is very transformative. Um, I mean, I think all the elements can be transformative, but specifically water and fire I think are very transformative. Um, and transformation is a big thing in the 8th house, right? And, you know, this deck is very sensual and sexual and I feel like that you know that that's eighth house that's um also not only that but it's like images like this and there's some other ones in here like with 
like swords and or knives and there's um yeah like there's one like some of them can be a little confronting and a little challenging um so i feel like this really represents the eighth house a lot to me because it's like those things that can sometimes like this one can sometimes be hard to look at right they can make us a little uncomfortable because it's you know, dealing with events or thoughts or just things that can be hard. And it's also things that, you know, as a society, we don't openly talk about a lot. So that makes it even more uncomfortable because we're not used used to it, right? Um, it's it's not our, you know, natural state. But it also has the power if we if we kind of make ourselves sit in that uncomfortability. It actually <laughs> now that I think about it is kind of just like these models for these photographs had to hold their breath and pose for these. And maybe, you know, twist their bodies in weird positions or, you know, and they had to be naked in front of a camera. They had to be, you know, touching these other people. They had to be, you know, enacting these scenes. And that alone, you know, besides just holding your breath underwater, can be uncomfortable. But they did it, right? They did it to create something completely different. They did something to create something beautiful. They did it to to transform what we're looking at and what we're seeing and what we're feeling. Um, and I feel like that's a very eighth house. If we make ourselves sit in that uncomfortability or make ourselves be in a state that is not our natural state, um, we can really benefit from that. We can really change the way we see things, the way we understand things, and that in itself can transform us into a completely different person. Um, you know, I don't think we're meant to do that all the time. It's, you know, I think we could get stuck, get lost, we could drown in it. You know, I don't think we're meant to be in eighth house energy all the time. But I think it's very, it can be very helpful and very beneficial at the right time for the right amount of time. Um, and even like the words on here. So like the title of this one is called The Accompany. The accompanist. Hopelessly blind. Actually, let me also read like a thing from the guidebook too. Because like the way the guidebook is written is very poetic. So this is the two of wands. All right, so the two of wands, hopelessly blind. So this says, he immigrates from another place, his eyes accustomed to light of a different latitude. The land from which he hails is foreign. It calls our ken of the world into question. Yet here he is, hopelessly blind. Knowledge, power, fortune, ambition, ruler, statesman, ambassador, dominion those were the key words so like even the entries in the guidebook and the titles of the photographs and of the cards um kind of evoke that transformative energy right a different way for us to look at things um and just like the you know the fact that these are taken underwater just how they look like they're very mysterious looking um very like I don't know, for me, this deck really evokes feelings of not only sexuality, but life, death, rebirth, um, all the all the things that the 8th house deals with. It really feels like that to me. So that was my choice for the 8th house. 
the Abyssal Tarot. Ninth house. So the ninth house is the house of exploration. It deals with things like um, higher learning, um, religion, spirituality, um, like higher learning, formal high, higher learning or informal higher learning, you know, learning from different places and cultures, uh, philosophy and travel, morals. So Star Codes says, if your chart were a village map, the ninth house would contain the international airport, university, or broadcasting tower. The ninth house is the original World Wide Web. It speaks of how we expand our world through official and unofficial higher education, travel, international understanding, philosophy, and global communication. So for this one, I chose the Art of Adventure Tarot. This one felt really appropriate for the ninth house to me. Because it feels like how do I say this? <laughs> it feels like a foreign land, right? It feels like going out of your comfort zone to go explore new places and new things. Um, and each of the suits, like so the sword suit for for example all the figures are like cut into pieces <laughs> um and yeah like all the pentacles they feel like they're like made of metal and gears and um so each suit feels like its own land right <sighs> And it feels like traveling to all these different places to soak in the culture and the knowledge and the different ways of being and speaking and doing and applying that to your own life and applying that to your own set of beliefs and ways of thinking, communicating and behaving and letting it add layers and knowledge to your own life experience. It also feels like, you know, you could go to these places and approach these figures and ask them to teach you, you know, like I feel like I could go ask this magician to teach me his ways and you know, we could have this formal, like, agreement that I, you know, I would be his, I would be his student and, um, you know, he would teach me all the, all the, the ways of, of manifesting and creating and using the tools to his, um, uh, that are at his disposal to, you know, create the life that he wants um, and then on the other hand it feels like I could just be a passerby looking at this at this alien figure <laughs> um, and just watching the way that they balance and dance with all the aspects of life to create harmony and I could just you know learn just by observing and experiencing and like I could go talk to this queen of swords and learn just from her you know learn just from the experience of having a conversation with her um I could learn morals from this figure in justice here I think another reason why this really feels like the ninth house to me is because this deck, if, if you've ever seen the show Adventure Time, this deck really reminds me of that. It really feels like that to me. Um, and that show in general, as well as 
one of the main characters, Finn. Like, it really has a big ninth house um, aspect to it for me. And this deck reminds me of that. So that could, you know, be partly a reason why it feels so fitting for the ninth house to me. But I have never noticed this, <laughs> this like angel seal, walrus rather. It's like an angel walrus. I've never noticed that before. <laughs> Anyway, I hope I um, did it justice with my explanation of why I chose it for the ninth house. But that was my choice for the ninth house, the Art of Adventure Tarot. Tenth house. So the tenth house deals with authority. Um, it also deals with like your public persona or public image. Um, awards, achievements, career, influences, status, um, dominant parent. So Star Code says, if your chart were a village map, the 10th house would hold the courthouse government, government seat and the public face of your work. Here is the arena for your most public self, your relationship to authority figures, and your role as a leader. Alright, so for this one, I actually chose the Rider Waite Smith Gold Foil Tarot. Um, I think, I, you know, you could probably do any Rider Waite Smith for this, not... I don't think I chose it just because it was the gold, gold foil edition. Um, but, I don't know, this one just felt right to me. Oh my gosh, wow. Look at that. And right when I pull it out, the emperor is on the bottom. <laughs> um, that feels very authority, authoritative to me. Um, so I actually struggled between picking this one or the Thoth Tarot. But the Thoth Tarot to me felt more of like an intimidating authority figure because I don't know how to read with Thoth yet. Like I know little bits and pieces, but I haven't read, you know, a book on it or anything yet. And I've only learned by observing and, you know, um, using the cards here and there. Um, so, but the energy did feel 10th house, but it just felt more of like a in, very intimidating to me. It felt like an outside authority figure instead of like my own 10th house. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I chose the RWS because I feel like... <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time explaining this one. <laughs> okay, so this is the system I learned tarot off of, right? So in that way, it feels like a teacher. It feels like... It does feel, in a sense, like an authority figure to me because it is the foundation behind the way I read any deck. Of course there are, you know, there are other layers. I don't strictly read only RWS meanings, but it's that foundation. So because it was my teacher, it feels like the the authority. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um not only that, but this deck is everywhere, right? It's very well known. It's very in the public eye, not only in the tarot community, because many of us learn from this system, but it's in movies, um, in TV shows. So I feel like this deck is very famous. <laughs> um but for a good reason, because it's a good deck. It's a good system. It's a good, 
example of the tarot. And it has achieved so much. It went from just like any deck, just like anything, right? It goes from a spark to an idea to a full-blown plan to a creation. And now this deck has achieved so much that it's not only its own thing, but it is the... <sighs> I'm not saying this is the only deck that has done this, but this is a deck that has certainly done this. <laughs> um, it is the driving force or factor or inspiration behind many new decks and new creations based off of this one thing. And I feel like that is a big achievement and that is a big... Um, like, talk about public image, right? Like, this is this deck. Um, and I, I think the gold foil one just gave it that extra flash, so it felt, like, really, you know, important and famous and <laughs> uh, award-like. Um, and this deck has such a reputation, right? Because it is so well-known. And I just feel like, not only for me personally, because it's the system I learned off of, but I do think, in a sense, it is an authority figure in the tarot world. Because it has accomplished so much. Because it does what it does so well. And it's also inspiration. Sorry, fuzzies. <laughs> it also, like, gives inspiration to, you know, for me and for others to want to achieve, achieve not necessarily the, the same things this deck has achieved. Like, I don't think anyone can achieve the exact same thing anyone else achieves. But, like... It sparks inspiration for a desire to have our own achievements, right? Does that make sense? So, that was my choice for the 10th house. The Rider Waite Smith Gold Foil Tarot. Okay, so 11th house. The 11th house deals with things like society, uh, community, social justice, charity, um, groups, humanitarian, humanitarianism, <laughs> um, it deals with, uh, the future, liberty, wishes, science fiction. Okay, so Star Code says, 11th house of community. If your chart were a village map, the 11th house would be the community center with rooms for small meetings and great gatherings also serving the town council or state senate. The 11th house is a, plate to, is a place to meet old friends and make new ones, and a place to work as a team, share a song, and collaborate for the common good. It includes our collective experiences, meetings, circles, protest marches, group meditation, sobriety meetings, social gatherings, and teamwork. So the deck I chose for for this house is the Fifth Spirit Tarot by Charlie Claire Burgess, or Burgess, I'm not sure how to pronounce um, their last name. Okay. So, here is my choice for the 11th house. So, one of the reasons I chose this deck, or actually the main reason I chose this deck, is because it represents groups of people and communities of people that need social justice in our world right now. So... 
it kind of represents <clears throat> it represents the world that I want to be a part of. It represents an equal world that I want for our future. And that I think many of us want for our future. It represents um, people of color. It represents non-binary people. It represents transgender people. It represents people with disabilities, you know, whether that be a physical disability, maybe some of the people in this deck have an invisible disability. Whatever it is, it represents a lot of different communities that need representation, need support, and need fighting for right here, right now in our current world. Um, so that is the main reason I chose this, because I wanted a deck that felt like, um, that felt real like that. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but I think because this deck is so diverse, it really does represent that sense of community and how we are all a part of different communities and makes us think about okay what are the communities that we belong that we belong to what are the communities that we want to be a part of what are the communities that we don't want to be a part of um how do those communities affect our sense of thinking and being and believing um where do we share beliefs with different communities um and like i like, like i mentioned before this kind of represents the world that <clears throat> i see and hope for our future as a planet, right? A world where all types of different people in all types of different communities are treated as they should be, as was always meant to be, as equal, as the same, because we are all humans after all, right? And so in that way, this, this deck feels not futuristic in the technology sense, right? Like, I'm sure, you know, that is a part of our future, but that's not really what I'm talking about here with this deck. <laughs> the future I want to talk about is a future where we are all treated respectfully and equally. <clears throat> you know, in our interpersonal relationships, in our group relationships, systemically, globally, like, you know... So, um, also I think this deck also does a really good job of representing the elements, the four elements, uh, and f that's what I believe in and hope for our future as well, is people having a close connection to the earth and to the elements in that way, because if we don't start treating... <clears throat> not only the people in this world with respect, but the world, the planet itself with respect, we're, we're pretty doomed in my opinion. So the four elements I think are represented really well in this deck and it is the four elements that I think are a big part of what will be important in our future. So, yeah, this, this deck just felt like a really good representation of, like, not only the smaller communities that are um, in our society, but, like, bigger communities, right? Like, our, our community as a planet, <laughs> I guess I would say. Um, yeah. So, that's my choice for the 11th house.
that is the fifth spirit tarot. Okay, last one, twelfth house. So the twelfth house is the house of introspection. Um, it deals with things like karma, karmic de debts, dreams, um, the afterlife, um, escapism. So the Star Codes book says, if your chart were a village map, the twelfth house would be a quiet place. The sun is in the twelfth house just after sunrise, a time for prayer and meditation, for dreaming our deepest dreams. The twelfth house is our inner child's world, containing both the fairy land in which you might escape and the, and the monsters that live under your bed. So for this one, I cho chose um, soul cards. This is soul, car soul cards one and two. So hopefully there's not a glare, but um, just with the way my phone is set up, I can't really tell. Um, I chose soul cards because I feel like the 12th house is deeply personal because it, it deals with like... The things beyond, right? Um, the things beyond our physical reality. Um, and that's deeply personal because we all have our own relationship and connection to that and what that means for us. We all experience that differently. Um, but at the same time, the 12th house does have this aspect of like the bigger whole, the bigger picture right like the connectedness of of us to the things beyond but i feel like that is still deeply personal because <sighs> for example death we have like no way of knowing for a hundred percent sure what is going to happen when we die. What exactly that's going to look like, where exactly we'll be, what exactly we will feel and look like. And, you know, we just can't know that until it happens. Right. And although it happens to us all, right. So that's the bigger picture because all of us are going to go there. We're all connected to that, but it's deeply personal because while we're here on earth, we all have our own beliefs and experiences and um, connections to what that actually means. So, you know, that can be the case for many different things within the 12th house, but I just use death as an example of that. Um, and so the soul cards for me, I feel like really go hand in hand with that because there's no system, because there's no titles. It's just you looking at the images and diving into them and diving into not only the imagery, but how, how the imagery makes you feel and what it evokes for you. That is a deeply personal thing. And I feel like it's very, um, it's very dreamlike as well. Like, I think this would be a good deck to explore dreams too. Um, and I feel like this deck really encompasses like the things like past lives, things like life, death, rebirth, like, I know that's, like, an eighth house thing, too, but, but how that kind of adds to our karma or our, <clears throat> what we see as just, like, divine justice or what we see as, um, fate or what we see as luck or what we see as 
you know, maybe we see as just mere coincidence, you know, like that's all very deeply personal thing. And all of that is something that lies like, yes, it can be in our conscious mind, but I think it's home is our subconscious. That's where it dwells, right? All, everything I just talked about dwells in the subconscious, and that's very 12th house to me. Um, and I think that this deck really kind of brings the dark of the subconscious out into the light for, you know, a few moments so that we can explore it and see what it means to us. what it means to us on a personal level and what it means to us on a bigger level, not only on like a global scale, but like, I would say universal, but like there's more than that, right? There's more than just this universe. There's infinite <laughs> universes, um, in my opinion. So it's just like our inner world, how that relates to us as a person and how that relates to the all. So that is my choice for the 12th house. Soul cards one and two. So that was it guys. That was my choices for one deck for each house. I hope I did an okay job of explaining my choices. Um, like I said, I'm still learning. So um, if you'd like to join in, please do. I would love to hear some different perspectives, see some different decks, and some, hear some different thoughts on the houses. Uh, so yeah, if you want to play along, use the hashtag one deck for each house. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for being here. Um, if you like this video, please, you know, give it a like, comment, tell me what you thought, and subscribe if you want. And I will see you in the next one. Be well. Bye.